Hello world, it's me, Jamung Bai. Today's episode is a bit of a full circle story. In 2021, I gifted a close friend of mine a model kit. In 2022, another close friend of mine brings the same kit over to build on my channel. From the DC Universe in Kotobukiya, I'll be building Wonder Woman. This is a non-scale Wonder Woman model kit from Kotobukiya. She's designed by illustrator Humikane Shimada, who has designed quite a bit for Kotobukiya, including the Frame Arms Girl, Mega Musume, and Megami Device model kits. This is actually my first time building a Kotobukiya model kit, and I owe it all to my buddy over at Cosplay Controller. Channel link is in the description. Everything that I'm showcasing here is what's inside the box, and when it's all put together, it will look like this. Hold on, we're getting a little bit too far ahead here. Let's build up! Better fall back in line, Adam. I am superior in every way. You suffer a sad delusion. Begin. Wonder Woman wins. Love conquers hate. Hate is the foundation of my empire. But sometimes you need to crack skulls. Begin. Wonder Woman wins. Blaming me changes nothing. Don't deny you cursed me, Diana. You brought it on yourself. Begin.
Almighty is a joke. I'm dominating you. Taste my blade. Hail Demeter! Wonder Woman wins. Drop the gun or I'll take your hand. Come and get him. A shame you will die so young. Begin. I've trained for millennia, Brainiac. No Earthling can harm me. But a god's daughter can. Begin. Hail Hestia!
All right, let's take a look at Wonder Woman. Things definitely started off a bit bumpy, but I'm glad that I made it to the end. Despite a frustrating introduction and the lack of specific details this kit has to offer for a $60 price tag. Building Wonder Woman started off pretty rough. I spent nearly a half hour on just her head, thanks to this bottom piece right here. You had to position it just right for it to stay. But nothing was more frustrating than this tiny hair piece for her bangs. I'd attach it to the bangs, then to the tiara, and it would fall off instantly. It wasn't until I looked at the instructions again, and you have to glue that one part. So I had to break out the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, and it was off to the next area. And for the record, that's the only time you're going to need glue for this kit. I'm not gonna lie. I got a little bit overconfident looking at the runners for this kit. I looked over everything and I said, this isn't going to take that long. And then I ended up clocking in at nearly two and a half hours. Stay humble, world. I'm not the biggest Wonder Woman fan, but I love the whole anime aesthetic here. She gives all classic anime vibes, which I really like. While I mostly prefer mecha kits, this would be the second time I built a female model. The colors of Wonder Woman's suit come off as a bit muted in comparison to her vivid reds and blues, like the comic book version of the character. The gold accents could be a bit more metallic in my opinion, but I do like it more than Hasbro's mustard attempt on their Lightning Collection Goldar figure. <clears throat> Speaking of accents, I do have a gripe with this kit. It's not a deal breaker by any means, and if you actually paint kits, it's fine. But there are definitely some pretty obvious colors missing from this kit. There's a green diamond that's supposed to be right here, with a gold plating underneath, white stars on both sides of the hips, or belt. Are these like hip guards? Tacit? And the one that really gets me is the missing white accents that should complement her boots. Again, if you paint models, it's fine. I don't. At least not yet. But for $60, where's some of that Bandai-like parts engineering that separate colors? How about a sheet of color correcting decals? The decals it did come with were for the eyes, and I did not use them. Check it out. This is a $10 entry grade kit from Bandai. This kit comes with some pretty good parts engineering to separate parts like his eyes and his tongue from each other. On the other hand, Pac-Man's eyebrows use a decals, which shows despite limitations, you can still pull off this kind of accuracy regardless of the price. And dollars. And then you have the figureized kits, something in the similar price range, like this Kamen Rider Fies. Certain details are separated with specific parts, like these red areas. Some areas are decals, but there's also engineering that separate colors for detail, without calling for paint. So when I'm looking at her boots, I expected a lot more. At least some decals and not some color guide for painting. It's a great kit, but if this is how Kotobukiya operates, they can definitely do better. I never thought I'd ask for decals on any kind of kit, but here we are, and it feels weird. All of that aside, the only details I've provided was some black panel lining using black accent color by Tamiya. This isn't an advertisement, I promise. Wonder Woman is jam-packed with a pretty generous amount of accessories that include a standard smiling face and a similar one with a bit of a side eye, an angry shouting face, bald fists, relaxed hands, action hands, pointing hands. She also comes with two lassos of truth, a short one and a long one to be held in her grabbing hands. She also comes with a sword and sheath that attaches to the side of her waist, and you just insert the sword into it just like so. There are also these bladed gauntlets that complete the whole look, and those blades can actually detach and go into the other slot in the front for some Assassin's Creed hidden blade type action. Also included is a shield that has swappable tabs, both rectangular and circular, so that you can attach it to the gauntlet of your choice. And there is what appears to be an effect piece that tabs into the shield, which is either giving off a glow or a glow in a sense of the shield spinning toward her enemies. If you want to switch it up with Wonder Woman's style. She also comes with alternate thigh parts that you can simply remove and replace the others like so. And she can go from this to this. And wrapping up accessories, Wonder Woman comes with a purple stand that has articulation in both the base and the top peg. Just make sure she's in a natural standing pose, slightly bent knees, place the peg in her lower back, and it will end up looking like this. Wonder Woman is packed with a decent amount of articulation, meaning it's time to check the flex. Her head is on a ball joint, giving some left and right movement, and there's some tilts from side to side. With her hair, movement is a bit limited, so she can only look up this far, but looking down is pretty good. Her neck is on a hinge, but still limits looking up, but she can look all the way down now. There are parts of her hair on both sides that are hinged, and they move inward and outward. Boom, tika boom, tika boom, tika boom, tika boom. 
it's her arms spread out this much. This is as far as her arms go forward and upward. Arms move back this much. The ball joint in the base of her arm serves as a butterfly joint, so she can cross her arms forward pretty well. There's swivel in the upper arm piece, bicep swivel. Her arms have single jointed elbows, but bend up generously. Wrists are on a hinge, while the peg on the wrist allows for the hands to swivel. Upper torso is on a ball joint, giving some good rounded movement with some side to side bends. She can bend back this far, not a whole lot of ab crunch, and it will leave an open gap right here in the back. And there's some swivel in there as well. There is a pull up feature in the lower back, but it honestly doesn't do very much. Legs come out about this much on the splits only goes back this far, but she can definitely lift her leg forward a pretty decent amount. There is a bit of a drop down for the leg, but it only improves her leg height just a little bit. The splits improve just a little bit, but moving the leg back, not so much at all. The lower thigh swivel was in two places, with the go piece and the area below it. The knees are double jointed and bend up quite a bit. There's swivel in the boots. Foot goes down this much and up this much. And there's some ankle rocking action here. Wonder Woman is a non-scale model kit that comes in about six and a quarter inches tall, which is definitely taller than my go-to scale, which is 112 scale. Let's do some size comparisons. Here she is next to an SH Fig Arts Wonder Woman 84 and Figma Sukiban Makoto, a Marvel Legends Miss Marvel and DC Collectibles Batgirl. Lightning Collection Godar and SH Figure Arts Shinkocho Seho Kamen Rider Amazon. And the only other female model kit that I've built until now, the Bandai Spirits Girl Gun Lady, Alice. For my first time building a Kotobukiya kit, I'm pretty satisfied. It started off a bit rough, and I've never wanted decals or part separations so badly, especially for a $60 model kit. The bar was set pretty high for me, but that's really all my fault for building mostly Bandai kits. But I still enjoyed building her. This is a pretty dope kit with some great articulation, and I was able to take some really cool pictures. I'm pretty glad I was able to step outside the box and experience another brand's offerings. Because of that, I only have one thing to say to you, Kotobukiya. Now, you have my attention. And that's a wrap for today's episode. I'd like to thank my buddy Cosplay Controller for providing me with this kit to build. Be sure to check out his channel, and I hope he enjoys this kit once he gets it in his hands. I'd also like to apologize for the delay in releasing this video. It's a little bit different from what I normally do, so hopefully this experience helps future model kit videos in this season. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you're new around here, I hope you decide to stick around because I've got more videos on the way. I'll see you in the next episode. But in the meantime, keep on building. Peace.